Hey everybody, how's it going? So today I'm gonna to talk to you about the TP-Link RE650 Wi-Fi Extender Repeater. This video assumes you have a basic understanding of networking. So why am I making this video? I'll tell you why. Because I, my objective was pretty simple. I just wanted to extend the Wi-Fi network at my work, but first I wanted to test it on my home network. Pretty easy, right? Well, I ran into a bunch of catch-22s trying to achieve that simple objective. So that's why I'm making this video. All right, so normally with a router, and let's say it's a wireless router, you usually have what's called a WAN side and a LAN side. The LAN side IP address is also the gateway. If you want to manage the router remotely from the WAN side, usually come through a port. So your WAN address is more than likely a class B address, which might be something like, but you can also manage on the LAN side. And this would be with the computer. Typically, your LAN IP would be a class C. So if you were going to manage your router on the LAN side, that's the address you would use to manage your router. If you were managing on the WAN side, you'd come in through a port and you would manage on that side. Now typically, your gateway and your LAN are usually set up dynamic, but it can be static. All static means is that you assign all the numbers. Dynamic means you allow the numbers to be signed automatically. The advantage of having the static IP, obviously, is that you know the IP address so you can manage your router. So this is how your typical router situation kind of works. So here's the problem with the repeater. The problem is that normally I would think this would behave like a router. What would happen is we would have a LAN IP and it would assign a WAN IP. This is how I assumed it worked and it, it does actually kind of work that way. So now it has to sign IPs to the different nodes in the network. So this is where things get weird. This extender has a mode called auto. So what does auto do? What auto does is it allows the router to assign an IP address through the repeater to the computer. So let's say we're on an IP and we assign a DHC pool, all right? So in auto mode, the computer will then get this address. So here's the problem. The default IP in this unit so how do you manage that? Well, essentially you don't. <laughs> Regardless if you enter in through Wi-Fi or you enter in through Ethernet, you're gonna use this address to manage the unit. So here's the problem. If you wanna manage this, you have to change your computer address to be in this same subnet. So now that these are on the same subnet, you can communicate, but you can't surf the web because the web subnet is a 10.1.10. So there's your catch 22. So how do you do a firmware update? You can go to the web to do a firmware update, but the only way to really accomplish that is if your router IP happens to be in the same subnet as your repeater. So if your repeater and your router and your computer are all in the same subnet, you can manage the repeater flawlessly but most times they're not gonna be in the same subnet. So here's another option you can do. You can do the on option, which then makes this sort of a pseudo router in that it assigns IP addresses to all the nodes. So let's just say, for instance, I wanted to use that subnet and I wanted to assign IPs. So then the IP address my computer would get dynamically so here's where it gets kind of confusing because if this is on the 192.168.0.254 network and you tell this to become a router and assign IP addresses, well then my computer's gonna get a 192.168.0.100. So now I can manage this, but I can't get out on the internet because the internet's on a 10.1.10.1. If I use the auto function, the router will go through the repeater 
and assign my computer a 10.1.10.100 so now I can get out to the internet. Now I can't manage my repeater. So they basically have kind of set this up that you can't manage your repeater and surf the web at the same time. Why is that necessary? Well, if you want to do firmware updates, you have to do the firmware updates through the internet. The only time this might work is if your router just happens to be on the 192.168.0.1 network, it will assign your computer an IP address in that subnet, which is also just happens to be the same subnet as the repeater. So in that situation, where all three are getting the same address, well that will work. The so chances are your router is not going to be on this subnet. So how do you get around all this? Well, there's really only one real workaround. Because the management IP is the same, whether you go through Ethernet or Wi-Fi, all you have to do is run a cable from your Ethernet port to your repeater and then assign statically uh, an address in that subnet. Okay, so now this solves all your problems because your computer is now connected to the internet through the repeater, your repeater is connected to the internet, and your computer is now connected to your repeater through the ethernet port. All you have to remember is that you have to statically assign an address on the ethernet port that matches the subnet of the repeater. The Wi-Fi will be dynamically assigned an IP address through the router because you have your repeater in auto mode. So this address goes through to your computer, you're surfing the net, you're happy, and your computer is connected to your repeater through the ethernet cable. That's the workaround and that's the only way to manage your RE650 repeater in what we'll call a hostile environment. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful. Please subscribe. I really appreciate it. I'll give you a dollar. Okay, no I won't. <laughs>